Hello, I'm Paul Michael Glazer, and you are watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to cartoonist Jonathan Mahood. He's the creator of the popular daily comic strip, Bleaker, the Rechargeable Dog. Stick around. The entire interview will be conducted by Siri. <laughs> Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of the most famous AI in America, including Robot from Lost in Space, Data from Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Blue from IBM, and Al Gore from Current TV, in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. What little boy in the last hundred years didn't grow up wanting to own or even build his own robot? And a robot dog? Zoinks! What a great idea! Jonathan Mahood knows what I'm talking about. He may not have built his own 3D robot, but he used his particular talents to accomplish the next best thing. He created Bleaker, the rechargeable dog, a comic strip you can now find online and in daily newspapers worldwide. Bleaker, along with his boy owner, Skip, is billed as the next step in the evolution of daily comics, going back to Charlie Brown and Snoopy and on through Calvin and Hobbes. In Peanuts, of course, the dog was the dreamer, fighting the Red Baron in aerial dogfights. In Calvin, the boy took us all with him on his outer space adventures as he restlessly daydreams in elementary school. But bleaker is what technology has wrought, a fully realized, loyal, and allergy-free pet with built-in iPod, cell phone, camera, printer, and GPS. Oh, and he has a built-in jetpack, too. And an airbag. Parents don't even ask. <laughs> Bleaker, the rechargeable dog, started life as an online strip and today is distributed to newspapers, websites, and mobile apps by King Features Syndicate. It can be read daily on more than 100 newspaper sites, Daily Inc. with a K, dailyinc.com, and bleakercomics.com. And with that, Jonathan Mahood, welcome. Hey, nice thanks very you. much. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Nice to have you. I'm, uh, I'm delighted to have been introduced to your strip. I'm, now, I'm, now I'm just pissed that uh, my daily newspaper doesn't carry it. Yeah, um, so am I, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see what we can do Go about that. Phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, i, I got to figure, Jonathan, that you are the envy of a generation of lost boys. I mean, you've got a <laughs> robot and a dog. Yeah, that's right. how, how did this happen? I, I, uh, I, you know, I, like everybody, you know, you get kind of uh, the swept up with all the technology and that. That's uh, I think, uh, you know, being a kid that grew up through the 70s and 80s and that, and I still have memories of going to the record store on Tuesdays, you know, to get the latest uh, stuff. To actually have an iPod with all your, it's like, you know, Jetsons kind of stuff, you know. And uh, so, yeah, so I think I just sort of, uh, it's like a bit of a, a you know. There's a lot of you know fanboys out there as far as tech. So I mean, it's, it's and it's exploded in the last you know a few years. So it just seemed like a great idea for a comic strip and and uh, a never-ending supply of. There's a lot of people out there working on new technology all the time. So there's like lots of topics and uh, you know. So were you one of those boys who wanted a robot? I mean, I know I did. Yeah, I think, you know, because, you know, I, when Star Wars came out, right, you know, everything kind of changed, the world shifted, right, so so I think ever since then, you know, you've kind of, uh, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, building with your Legos or, or whatever, it just, you know, I never had the science skills, though, that's the thing. Right, right? exactly. Which, you know, my dad was a uh, electrical engineer, so there's a whole uh, ugly family thing of him trying to get me to do the multiplication tables and you know it's just yeah so you know so i could draw them. I could draw the robot, robots i couldn't you know make them so not yet not, not yet. yet not yet <laughs> see i you know what i i was just thinking what you said my daughter has a ter we've discovered in the last year has this talent for math and science oh, and yeah. i'm thinking that kid owes me years yeah, of tuition 
And you know, I think I need to put that brain to to good use now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I'm like you. I mean, I, I you know, and I couldn't draw. I mean, I could. I did the lo the Legos. I used to. I was thinking about this uh, uh, leading up to talking to you. I I, li I, I lived. I, I had the bedroom at the top of the stairs in our house, and I was always trying to come up with Rube Goldberg. Dev Nobody knows what Rube Goldberg is anymore, but <laughs> the devices, you know, so that I could I could leave something at the bottom of the stairs. And you know, a little thing would come along and grab it, and then I could just oh, pull yeah. and bring it all the way up the stairs. Yeah. I mean, the height of laziness. I, 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 <laughs> I absolutely great. Or, or mom's downstairs saying, "Hey, will you come down here and pick this stuff up?" And I could just say, "Oh, mom, just put it on the little lift, and I'll just pull it right up." <laughs> yeah, and you know, that that didn't go very well. But then the idea of a robot, and yeah, I mean, wow, what a great idea. Um, so, so tell folks a little. I mean, were there, you know, and I know that. Um, Bleeker started as Hoover, but were there iterations before that of, of uh, the robot dog, or was this yeah. the beginning? Well, not not the robot dog, actually. I did, uh, like, I started uh, trying to, uh, you know, it's always been a dream to, to, to get a newspaper comic syndicated. And so, but, you know, so it's a long, long story, you know, starts like, I think around 92, I started submitting, and every comic would kind of, you know, I you know you'd get the inevitable rejection letters, and then you'd have to start again. And there was no web, so you couldn't post it online and develop it, right? So you just okay, scrap it and you move. So I'd always sort of take, you know, the stuff that I really liked at the last trip, and then I'd carry it on to the next trip, which sometimes isn't such a smart idea because maybe some of those things didn't work so well, and you just keep carrying that baggage along. But but with Bleaker, it was kind of uh, I had done a strip that I really liked the relationship between the uh, the two characters, and it was a boy and actually a gourd at the time, like a talking gourd. That's that's another a talking story. gourd. Yeah, it was a, didn't go either. A <laughs> talking gourd. I'm, I'm sorry, no disrespect intended, <laughs> folks. I, I apologize. Yeah, I know, and it's like you know, and it's like I I still drew that gourd for a lot. I know it's gonna work. I know it's gonna work. Anyway, so but I really like the relationship, and it was a simple simple. And with newspaper comics, it's got to be really. You know, to get started, it's got to be easy for the reader to get on board, right? So it's got to be simple, and and uh, uh, so I think it was around that time that I got my first iPod or whatever, and I was sitting outside with uh, uh, my dog, and I was thinking, boy, I carry these two things follow me around, <laughs> you know. And it was also at the time when there's a lot of news uh, reports of uh, parents uh, doing cell phones, giving their kids cell phones to track kids. So that whole technology thing where the parents were using it to... And so I think I started working on a comic with uh, with a uh, Skip character with kind of like an adopted robot brother or something like that, like kind of like an android kind of thing. And it really wasn't working out, and the character sort of kept turning into like a battery shape. And then I thought... Well, a natural relationship would be a dog and a and a boy, but in this case, you know, flip it around where the dog is really kind of like a uh, monitoring device to keep this, you know, accident-prone kid from, you know, doing himself in kind of thing, right? And and that's how it kind of developed. So yeah, but it was from that previous comic strip, and then uh, uh, and then in 2006, I put uh, Hoover at time online and uh, sort of went from there. So. 2006. Oh. Six, six, <laughs> six years. I mean, that's amazing. I and what were you doing for a living before the, before this? I did uh, uh, I did a few things. I got a, a degree, a fine art degree in sculpture. So no money there either. Just you know, <laughs> take so, note, kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, eventually, I did uh, I did some sign uh, design and and part time back and forth. You know, from you know doing artwork full time, always doing the comics in the background and, and illustration jobs or whatever. But the main thing I was doing was uh, 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 carpentry. I started uh, building my own furniture and, and uh, then I got into uh, doing finished carpentry and cabinet work and stuff like that and started to incorporate some of the... Uh, I live up in cottage country, so there's you know some nice fancy cottages being built. So sometimes they would need custom carved details or whatever, and I'd do that kind of stuff, so... I'm sorry. You said you live in cottage country. Cottage country, yeah. It's like uh, it's. Wait. Uh, let me let me get my uh, do you know, Google mapping here. You don't have that in Florida. Uh, <laughs> go, go, co no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, cottage no cottage country. country. No. Where is that? 
Cottage Country is like uh, uh, well, I'm about two hours north of Toronto, so oh, so it's like lakes and and uh, beaches and basically rocks, trees, and water. <laughs> that's you know that's about it. And people show up here in the summertime to relax and fight the bugs, and then they eighty six it out of here in the in the fall kind of thing. So wow. This is my, we we always came up here as kids, so that's how I sort of ended up up here. So I think you've just created your next strip, Cottage Country. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it could run alongside with pickles. Yeah, that's right. Or just just a, a story about a bunch of bugs and mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hey, you're doing okay with a dog and a boy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You know. Uh, <laughs> so. So, uh, and, and were you particularly, uh, you know, gadget crazy? Uh, was that just? Uh... Yeah, it's funny, you know, because like, uh, I, you know, I, I remember when the first computers came out, and I was totally not interested really at all, you know, because it, you know, it didn't didn't connect, and they weren't very user friendly at the beginning, right? So all the, the, you know, I, like I said, my dad was an electrical engineer, and he came home. Uh, this would be like late 70s thing. he came home with this cardboard box and it had uh, a whole bunch of you know they had a keypad and a little look looked like a calculator but with like a a, a bomb attached to it or <laughs> you know it's just all the wires and everything and that and he was like oh this is incredible you guys you know this is you know like this is the future you know we look at that i can bring this home you know like because he was uh they had the big mainframes at the at the office right and uh he was my brother and I, all we wanted was an Atari, and he would be like, not until I can program it. If I can't program it, I'm not buying it. It's like, you just want to play space with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't until, like, much later when it got very user-friendly that, uh, that for me, then I sort of, like, it connected for me. And, and that's also when, you know, all the gadgets started kicking in. So, yeah, I always had Walkmans and, you know, all the way up through. But, yeah, and now I'm, you know, iPad and... You know, I don't know how many iPods I've got now kind of thing scattered about. So it's always something fun to play with, that's for sure. So now, are we receiving video from uh, from your iPad or from Bleeker himself? Yeah. Th- not not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Working on that, right? <laughs> that would be great, yeah. No, this is a, this, yeah, this is an iPad, though. But I, there is a, uh, uh, I think iRobot just is coming out with a, uh, telepresence robot that you attach your iPad to, and it will walk around your home. Wow! Which would be yeah. Wow! Yeah. I'll take that's one of those. That's getting close. That's getting close. You know that. I take one of those in a minute. Um, yeah. So uh, and what? Uh, and maybe we should explain a little bit. Uh, the idea of of, of of Bleaker is the dog, and Skip is the boy. I know I said that in the introduction, and. Uh, uh, the premise of the strip, the early strip, was that uh, Skip was really hoping for a dog. He built a dog house. He had the bowl, and his parents give him this box, and this is where the strip starts, right? And uh, inside the box is a wolf, and Skip's all excited, and out comes a robot dog. Now, <laughs> what, in 2006, 2007, uh, what could the dog do then that the dog... Uh, that is different from what the dog does now. I guess what I'm asking you is, how has the dog been, you know, received its updates? Uh, I yeah, I'm trying to. Well, one thing that's really, uh, it's a weird thing, is, uh, you know, when I started, it, Wi-Fi wasn't so uh, prevalent. You know, like it wasn't in every house, and it wasn't at like every McDonald's and every Starbucks and all that kind of stuff. You know, and so to he always had cables and stuff like that to sort of you know, to show he was getting an update or he was plugged into a virtual reality thing. And and I found that, you know, as the it's hard to I still have to show the cables, even though now that there's you know, all the Wi Fi updates would, you know, be totally, you know, through the air kind of thing. And so that's been kind of a funny balancing act, not to make him look so outdated that he's got cables, right? But at the same time translate that in the in the comic. So and I think I've toned down some of the uh uh, some of that at the beginning was like uh, uh, really like a transformer. I mean, he literally could, you know, and uh, he still does that a bit, but I tried to make it a little more uh, somewhat well, cartoon realistic. You know? <laughs> like, like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a different reality. Like Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That realistic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, it's changed a bit. So I mean, it's funny with the technology, the way it's changed. And that's the other thing that's kind of funny is that, you know, speaking of robots, I mean, you know, there was, it, it, it isn't that far-fetched anymore. You know what I mean? Like that's the, the kind of, you know, just since 2006, the, uh, the, the, the thought of having a personal robot like that isn't that, you know, just like you've got Siri on your phone talking to you. It, you know, it's really not that, uh, it's not as bizarre as it used to be kind of thing. So I, you know, I'll be honest, I cannot remember. And I, I guess I should have looked it up. Had the iPhone come out yet at, at 2006? No, I because I remember doing a comic, like it was. I don't know when it was, but I remember doing a comic about the launch of the iPhone. And when I when I was doing a web comic, I you know I was doing doing uh, finished carpentry. So and I never would. I'm still not really ahead, you know. But but it was even worse, you know. So I would always be the night before, you know, drawing the comic, and so it'd be very like you know the iPhone came out, you know, Monday like Tuesday. I would do a comic about the iPhone, you know, because it because everything was like that kind of uh, last minute uh, kind of. Thing. So yeah, so it was kind of funny. So and it's kind of funny now because everybody is so used to iPads and iPhones and all that kind of stuff and Wi-Fi and all that that it it's it's uh, I find for writing you can't really take off it as much because it sounds it feels kind of dated like it's like you're you know so it's it's a really it's funny to see how it changed just in that little time so it's amazing to me what we take for granted now that you know yeah. didn't even exist five or six years ago um and as as technology changes over the years and looking ahead do you um because i haven't had the benefit of reading six years worth of continuity on Bleacher, yeah. so, so for those people who have i apologize it just had not been uh accessible to me in you know a couple of days um but my question is uh do you do you make a point of indicating update uh, upgrades to bleaker or or is it just as technology changes is it just assumed that bleaker you know changes with the technology yeah i kind of i i don't I, I every every so often i'll do stories about upgrades and stuff like that in the in the uh in the strip but as far as the the technology and stuff like that, I've, I've, I just sort of slip it in because it, because it, for us too, I, I think, you know, at the beginning, the first strips, I was drawing like a, one of those first, not, not the first, but the, uh, the IMAX that were white, really thick, uh, like the Lucite plastic one. So, right. you know, in the strip, the, when he was getting updates, he was plugged into this really thick desktop, you know, and, uh, and then as things have gotten thinner and then with, you know, and I thought, well, this is, you, you know, not, you know, so I switched them to like a little, you know, uh, laptop or, or, or whatever. So, yeah, it seems to, it, it evolves sort of slowly, but it's still, I have a problem with all the wires, you know, because you got to show that, you know, Skip is connected to Bleaker, or, you know, or whatever, that there's some data transferring there or something. <laughs> so it's, you know. But we haven't got rid of wires yet, so that's a good thing for that's me. True. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking before we went on the air. Uh, you have a dog yourself, a 14-year-old. Yeah. Uh, what kind of dog is it? He's a part Border Collie, part Golden Retriever. Mm -hmm. So he 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 uh, de loves water, but he's not a great fetch. <laughs> like, he doesn't do the retrieving well, but he does the herding half well. Yeah, so it's a... He's yeah. He's an he's an interesting dog. Much smarter than I am. Much you know, which is not a good thing. No, probably not. Well, <laughs> I was I was going to ask you: Is there any any characteristics of Bleaker that you would like to see in your in your own dog? Yeah, I love the uh, the programmability. You know, that would be great to like you know be able to switch them off at certain times or uh, uh, yeah, alter the programming perhaps. You know, like uh, barking and things like that. So. <laughs> Like if you could, if you could set like like I, I noticed on my my uh, my cell phone, I can set it not to ring between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Yeah. I understand that would have been handy for you even last night, right? Yeah, yeah. It's four o'clock, and then again at 5:15 or whatever it was out in the driveway, you know. Yeah. Which is rare. He normally he's pretty good. I don't. I don't. Yeah, it was kind of like a strange. Uh, he's got one of those like piercing barks too when he you know when he needs to go out and it's just like ah so sorry uh <laughs> it's a great dog don't get me wrong okay all right well so well, i had asked you also ahead if uh if you might uh uh 
kind of entertain us a little bit by maybe drawing Bleeker. I could uh, try while we yeah. talk. And, sure. Uh, that would be good, and we, you know we can keep talking. Uh, this is uh, the advantage. Comment on the drawings. Yeah. You can say that. Oh, the years are wrong. You got the. <laughs> That's all right. And so, you know, the other thing we were talking about real dogs. So, you know, if 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 you could go out and buy a bleaker, uh, any any oh, I don't know, any politicians uh, on the landscape there you think that would do well with their they, PR? They, they say the best you want a friend in Washington, you get a dog, but a robot dog, they, you know, <laughs> for Romney, that would be the way to go if he if he ends up there. If, if, yeah, I mean, uh, nobody. Would, Nobody would care, I guess, if he put a robot dog oh, exactly. right up on the roof. Although there's a big thing in in uh, robot ethics right now, and it's all about you know because you know the discussion about robots becoming more and more in homes and stuff like that. That ab abuse of robots and <laughs> you know as they become more and more adaptive and all that kind of stuff. It's very bizarre. You start thinking about it, but yeah, we're not. You know, I don't know. That's too deep for me. So uh, when we uh, when we reach the point of uh, abusing robots, then we have that. Uh, that whole, uh, you know, the robots will rise up like in, uh, you know, Rise of the Planet of the Apes kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, you know, uh, look, uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with my daughter inheriting that world. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while, while you, you draw, I'll ask questions. Um, now, I, I notice, uh, see, this is great because we can see him coming together. The ears, he actually looks a little bit like a little, uh, little bit of a bear. What kind of dog is he? I don't, yeah, I'm not really, you know, to be honest with you, he was a battery. That's what. <laughs> right, you did say he was, that, yep. He was a battery, and, and I kind of stuck the ears on him. And the ears have, uh, like, when I first, it was really funny. If I look at back to really uh, early drawings of Bleeker, he kind of looked like this. He had this massive nose. I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. And, uh, and then these ears, which were, like, kind of, uh, he was like a very square uh, kind of a, a thing. So it's really funny how he's uh, um, adapted or like just the drawing style has changed. And I keep looking back like, well, you know, good grief. Like the nose was like the, the <laughs> whole focal point. And it didn't have any like special functions either to make it that big, you know. So. Well, and, and I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of inevitable. You know, you, you start doing a, a strip uh, and you do all the samples, of course, and you're trying to, to sell a syndicate on it. Uh, and then you know if it, if you're fortunate enough that it runs for years, it just it just evolves. I mean, it's not you may not even yeah. intentionally have done it. Yeah, I mean, even I, I was floored when I saw like uh, uh, Doonesbury, right. early Doonesburys, and 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 then you see them now. It's like wow, what a you know transformation. It's really something to see. But then if you're drawing something every day, <laughs> it's a bound to you know. It's well, always shocking though when you Photoshop the early characters. And the middle characters are now together, mm -hmm. and and then you see the the variations. It's uh, it's really well, I had, you kind of shake your head because you think at the time I thought, wow, that's really great, and then you look back, ah, that was you know, <laughs> it was awful. I had uh, Brian Walker on the show last year, I think. It's Mort Walker's son, and he you know he works on uh, Mort strips, and and he but he's also done several comics history books. One of them was and you've probably seen this, uh, G. B. Trudeau and the Art of Doonesbury, and. It is amazing in that book to see. I mean, do, uh, Trudeau basically learned to draw on the job. He clearly was not an artist of any repute uh, when he started that. But of course, over the years, it, it just it developed, and he he worked on that, and it became a very different um, looking strip. Yeah, I mean, and it's a really polished strip too. You know, that's the thing. I mean, it's it's yeah, that's what's pretty staggering to see. <clears throat> that transformation and stuff like that, but that's always the fun thing about comics is to see it throughout the years. I was I started reading the never read them as a kid, but I started reading some of the Tintin mm -hmm. books, and and uh, you see the early stuff and then the later stuff and how it, how it refined down, and and uh, it's it's really kind of cool to see that, especially when you have all the books together and be able to see that you know artistic process all the way through, sort of thing. So. I wish, uh, I wish as a writer, I could, uh, I could say that I've seen that evolution in my writing, but <laughs> it's just not as obvious, and uh, it's still painfully uh, awkward. Uh, yeah, it's always. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what medium you're in; it's always awful to look at your own stuff. <laughs> it's quite true. Quite true. So, did you, uh, did you go to school for art? Did you study art in any uh, formal way? Yeah, I did, uh, 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 in uh, I did. Uh, 
uh, four years of uh, university at uh, fine art degree, visual arts, and uh, sort of specialized in sculpture and stuff like that. So did a lot of stone carving and some bronze work and, and stuff like that. So it's a really funny thing because the comic, the uh, sketchbooks that always have like sort of like a page of, of uh, you know, serious sketches or whatever. And then, you know, then inevitably that gourd would show up or something. Like that. <laughs> I will draw you the gourd. There we go. All right. All right. I, I I was thinking about asking. I was wondering how you uh, how you made a, a gourd. This is his, this is this is his big moment. He's never been a you know. No, he's never seen the light of day since. Uh, and what is his name? He's had various names. <laughs> he was uh, right now. He looks like a psychotic uh, 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 Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was uh, uh, Clyde the cucumber at one time. So he's been various uh, vegetables, and uh, late, late latest he was Gordy. Gordy, of course. <laughs> have you tried to figure out a way to get him into Bleecker, or have you already? I, I no, I haven't yet. I thought, I thought of trying to figure out something. I thought maybe he could be like, uh, like uh, the. Uh, Itchy and scratchy of uh, of the the bleaker world, you know. He could be like the. <laughs> That's a great idea. But uh, uh, he hasn't. Then I had an idea that he would be a, uh, a do a whole separate strip with him of uh, uh, retired comic strip characters that never made it, or <laughs> sort of like a, a retirement home or something for, you know. He kind of looks like one of those Trudeau characters that would like uh, narrate a storyline now and then. Uh, uh, didn't he, did they, did he use a condom at one point? And he used the he had the cigarette, That's right. right? That's right. It yeah. kind of Gordy or whoever we're calling him now. It kind of kind of looks like one of those guys. Yeah, I mean he he he, he had he had a, a long life before, uh, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's he's got to be. That's a the scary thing. I think I started drawing him in the last year of high school, so that shows you how wow. how many years you know you hold on to these things. Now, one of the interesting things in the development of the strip, uh, from what I've read, is that you had actually even before King got involved, and and before really much else had happened, you actually sold the strip uh, as a as a as a cartoon property. Is that right? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, um... That was 2007. I I just got on uh, Go Comics, and I got uh, uh, contacted by an uh, animation company in uh, uh, Toronto that was interested in uh, uh, Bleecker for a kids uh, animated uh, TV series, and so uh, uh, that kind of I think that development period was about three years. And the sad thing is that it, it actually did sell. And it was one of those, like, it was a good learning experience for me, you know, because you hear it all the time. But it sold to, uh, 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 like, a youth network up here. And it was all set to go. And then management changed. (sighs) (laughs) And and you're like, huh? They can do, you know, it was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And uh, so it got axed. And then they uh, managed to sell it to, like, a, a, a smaller uh, TV thing, and then and then the economy. It was like 2008, 2009, and then it just you know it it fell apart kind of thing. And and uh, but you know they were great people to work with, and and it was a good learning experience for me because you know I've after that you hear about all these people that are very very successful who have like you know pages and pages of doc of uh, contracts that have never been you know worked out kind of thing. So it's a bit of a I guess that's sort of the the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what area you're in; it's a bit of a crapshoot, and you, and you can't tell where the magic dust is or where it isn't. Or so I'm sure you're quite aware of. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say even if you find the the magic dust, uh, you you've got to uh, you've got to deal with uh, studio accounting. And, oh <laughs> yeah. my god, it's just awful. So where where are the rights now for for the uh, cartoon? Uh, King Features has they, has all that. Yeah. Okay, so if if. Uh, if someone was watching this, you know, who was, happened to be in that industry and wanted to know about the rights to doing a strip, a, a, a cartoon of Bleecker, uh, they need to contact our good friends at King. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think animation would be really fun with it too because he's got so many. There's a lot of stuff that you uh, 
can't do in a comic strip because it's the static medium, mm -hmm. you know, that you think animation-wise you could really play up some of the fun fun features and stuff like that, you know. So it's a, and that was a funny thing for me too, is that, you know, comics is such a solitary thing, you know, like you barely, you barely see anybody like I'm talking to you. This is a big day for me. <laughs> and, uh, but animation is very collaborative. You know, you're working with, you know, script people, uh, mm -hmm. character designers, voice actors, you know, it's a very big, uh, so that was kind of a cool thing to, to see the, how the whole thing worked and, and, uh, you know, and talk to other people. That was another <laughs> It's a real bonus. I get that completely. This, I mean, <laughs> you know, when I'm doing these interviews, sometimes that's the highlight of my day because I never yeah. leave my desk. But it's yeah. like, you know, you get it, you, you get into this whole world of, you know, where, where other people work. and uh, Yeah, and, cool. and, uh, and you get the weird hours too, right? So, I mean, you know, besides the dog getting me up, I'm generally up pretty late anyways, you know. So it, it's, uh, and then the rest of the world, nobody functions like that, you know. <laughs> you get emails at like 8 o'clock and I'm like, what do you do? 8 o'clock, that's. And uh, Jonathan, is this a full time gig now? Is are you making your living uh, doing this? Yeah, Excellent. yeah. It's uh, um, for the last uh, I guess about three years now. I've is it three years? Uh, because Bleaker got picked up in. Uh, uh, I had the animation deal for a while, and then I also had. Um, he's been uh, running in. Uh, 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 did site in Germany uh, since uh, 2000, June 2008, so almost four years now. Hmm. And uh, it started off. It was weird. I just they they were looking for a comic that would appeal to both like adults and kids and stuff like that for this new uh, kids page they were doing. And uh, they saw it on Go Comics and and they contacted me and and so I would send them the things. They would translate them. I would send they would send them back to me. And I would print it all. In German, that which is great. I learned some great words and stuff like that, you know, and uh, and it took off. It did really well, and, and it sort of spun into uh, the. It's still in the paper, and it's also uh, they they've got a, a put together some really nice kids magazines that are uh, uh, go across Europe, and uh, and so I it's been great because I've been get to do like a, a two page spread comics in there of Bleecker, which is really fantastic. I mean, you just don't get that space very often, right? So, so at first I was like, I don't, you know, it's almost like uh, the the person who's been locked in a room for a long time and said, "Here's a park," and you're kind of like huddle in a corner, you know, because it was too much space, you know. So, so, uh, but no, it's been really great, and they've been great to work with. So that's. Uh, so yeah, so the stuff like that has been kept me busy, and I used to do editorial comics for the local paper here as well. So, cool, that's very great. Kind of take away at different things, that's for sure. So, well, and before we uh, we kind of wrap up, I I'm I'm kind of wondering, uh, you know, how long till we can get uh, a uh, like a, a plush uh, Bleaker doll? I don't know. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I was even thinking. Uh, I was even thinking. Uh, uh, you know, like I've got an R two D two here that. You, from years ago that you can wind up and walk, you know, like that. Yeah. And I thought, man, that would be great. That, that would could be great. Have, you, I, know. you know what? I've got it. I know exactly what you need. Okay, so somebody out there watching this, think about this. You need a, uh, a bleaker plushie, okay, that's a little sturdy, but a plush bleaker that is big enough to hold on its front chest an iPad. Yeah, there you go. Right? There right? Go, yeah. Okay, so that's Still it. And, speakers and... You you could buy that Charging. as an accessory. Yep, wouldn't that be a great accessory in like the kids section or at the, or in uh, you know at, at the Apple Store or at Best Buy or you know exactly. whatever you have in Cottage Country. I don't know. Uh, uh, got a Radio Shack. There okay. Go. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, so all right. <laughs> Well, um, uh, well, show us uh, if you would just hold up to the screen what you've drawn so everyone can see what, what we've got. Uh, Cool. There's uh, there's Bleaker at the top and Gordy in the bottom left. And then who's our who's our robotic? That's uh, right? Carl. Carl the uh, Carl's the angry robot vacuum cleaner. Finish him off here. Because a robot vacuum cleaner would be angry all the time. I figured. <laughs> Probably. It's kind of a, a crab like uh, crab like and crabby kind of. Uh, a little, a little uh, like Mr. Krabs and uh, uh, SpongeBob. Yeah, except not as uh, uh, <laughs> devious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carl's just flat out Brady? angry. 
I'm trying to think of all my good Mr. Krabs uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, adjectives. Well, um, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, we certainly yeah. appreciate the uh, the demonstration, and uh, I want to let everybody know uh, you can find Bleaker, the rechargeable dog by Jonathan Mahood, in uh, newspapers, websites, and uh, mobile apps uh, from King Feature Syndicate. Uh, it can also be read daily on more than 100 newspaper websites, as well as Daily Inc. Again, that's dailyink.com, as well as bleakercomics.com. Uh, mm. Batteries, I assume, are not included. Yeah, we're working on that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, can, can folks find you on uh, Twitter, Facebook, places like that? Yeah. Twitter and Facebook. There's a Bleaker Facebook page, and then I'm um, Twitter. I'm uh, uh, J Mahood at J Mahood on Twitter. So you know, if you go to BleakerComics.com, you can link to all those things. So very good, uh, Jonathan Mahood. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Media, today. Hey, thanks very much. It's great. Our pleasure. For more original interviews, surf over to our main website, MrMedia.com. MrMedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Another good idea? Download our new free Mr. Media mobile app in the Android market. And you can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of the Internet. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. We're also supported by the PartyAuthority.us. Call DJ Ira for all your party entertainment needs nationwide at 1 800 Dial DJs or visit their website, thepartyauthority.us. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also call our 24-hour listener line at 1-727-498-4711. Some messages may be used in an upcoming show. And unless you live next door to Mr. Media, there may be a toll charge. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube and Vimeo video channels. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, this is Bob Andelman from Mr. Media. First of all, I want to thank you for years of support uh, listening to the show. We're starting our sixth year, it's hard to believe, our sixth year uh, as 2012 starts and heading towards our 1,000th online podcast, uh, audio and video. It's uh, pretty amazing, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I remember starting it several years ago thinking, this will never last. And podcast, that's as stupid a word as blogging. But here we are, <laughs> starting our sixth year and heading up to a thousand interviews. And I want to thank everybody for uh, listening and supporting the show. I also want to tell you that, uh, you know, one of the things that's been very helpful for this show is Stitcher Radio. Yes, this is sort of a commercial. Now, there are millions of smartphone apps in the world, but I only use one several times a day, Stitcher Radio. I build my own radio station to listen to broadcast and online shows when I want and in the order I want. CNN News Update, Onion Radio News, WTF with Mark Marin, MSNBC's Morning Joe, Studio 60, the TechCrunch headlines, and of course, Mr. Media. It's free. It works on iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, Palm Pre, and much more. And you can get it for free for yourself. Try it out. I guarantee you're going to love it. Stitcher.com slash MR Media. That's Stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. You're going to love it. And thanks again for supporting the show. <laughs>